2007 Margaret Brent Award recipient, Marva Jones Brooks. Always take the high road. That's what Mildred and Henry Jones taught all three of their children. Henry was one of Pennsylvania's first black policemen. Marva learned that lesson well. It's her constant counsel to young women entering our profession, and it's how she lives and works. Marva chose Howard University from the 45 prestigious colleges offering her full scholarships. She graduated Phi Beta Kappa, magna cum laude in 1961, and married Bill Brooks. They started their family. Even at Harvard, any law student who was a woman was made to feel that she was taking a space that rightly belonged to a man. So Marva followed protocols that her parents taught her were the antidote for prejudice. Show up on time. Smile. Be the best prepared person in the room. It worked. In 1968, she was among the first African American women to earn a JD from Harvard Law School, then joined Pfizer's law department in New York. Maynard Jackson, first African American mayor of a major southern city, named Marva Atlanta's first female city attorney in 1980, signaling a new era in big city leadership for both professional women and African Americans. It was Atlanta's era of missing and murdered children, a terrorizing killing spree that spanned two years and claimed 29 young African-American lives. Frustrated police were veering toward using what Marva gently terms questionable investigative tools. Despite that the police were seasoned veterans, despite that Marva was female, young, and new, she firmly explained that the only way they could protect their case was to inform her every single day of crime-solving planning so that she could vet its legality. When the accused was brought to justice, Atlanta police were widely praised for outstanding professionalism, traceable directly to Marva Brooks' leadership, respect for the law, and inviolate commitment to the high road. As legal chief, Marva recruited other talented young women into public service leadership too. By words and example, she defined the high road for them. Be loyal to the law, do the work, and practice with intelligence and dignity. She stayed on as city attorney when Andrew Young was mayor. Among her impressive assignments, launched in 1987, was to assure that every detail of Atlanta's 1996 Olympics bid was on solid legal ground. That bid won the games in 1990, the same year Marva left for the private sector. She'd just settled into Arnold Golden Gregory when she accepted an even greater Olympic challenge. She became general counsel for Atlanta's Olympic Organizing Committee, an assignment that spanned the next decade. She did fact-finding at Barcelona's games, held six years of dawn and midnight planning meetings, and proudly carried the Olympic torch through her hometown. When that flame was doused, Marva still had much more Olympic legal work ahead. After four more years, Marva proudly announced that, despite the bombings, the Olympics left Atlanta no financial burden and even delivered a surplus. With that work conquered, she became board chair of the National Conference of Board Examiners. Fueling her groundbreaking career and all the spectacular good she has done for women lawyers and others are the values infused by her family. The rock steadiness of her life with Bill, their kids, little ones she calls the grands, and cricket. And then there's the most important thing, no matter what, Marva always, always takes the high road. With deep pride, the ABA Commission on Women in the Profession presents its 2007 Margaret Brent Women Lawyers of Achievement Award to Marva Jones Brooks. <laughs>